in this video I'm going to show you how to uh, integrate these differential equations using the Euler's integration method by just using a spreadsheet program here right now I'm just using a Google sheet um, so what we have here is something we can work on yeah so first and foremost just set up um, something like this you know, just type in Delta T because we need to um, uh, set the change in the day beta and gamma here so the box and then make a little table down here where on the column one you will have the um, days column two will be the number of susceptible people or rather the fraction of the population that is susceptible infected the next column is removed okay so we want to work with some numbers so let's put some number here delta t means change in a day change in uh, days so i want to ch see the change um, the dynamics of this um, model day by day so i just put that one i'm just going to pick 0.6 as our uh, beta parameter which is the infection rate and 0.1 as our recovery rate okay so let's stick with that at the moment now what we want to do is we want to set the initial um, state of our model okay so here let's say uh, 0 0.1 of the population is infected initially okay because if you have zero then uh, the model will not be going anywhere so let's say 0 0.1 percent of the population is infected so 0 0.1 percent is translated to 0 0.001 okay with one being a uh, hundred percent so 0 0.1 percent is 0 0.001 all right so because it's just the first day no one has recovered yet or dead yet so we put that as zero okay so now um on the first day um the susceptible people of course the total population minus the infected people so in this cell just put um, equal sign here so the whole population 100% just replace that with uh, 1 minus the infected okay just click on the cell here and then press enter so that's nice 0 0.999 which corresponds to the infected uh, um, uh, people in the population as well so now let's work on the next day so here we have to use this because we have set up the initial condition so for i here we're going to use these numbers and for the next day we're going to use this formula here so what we are going to do is just type this here because we're looking at the susceptible yeah so just click on that and uh, equals to the previous day here as i all right minus uh, beta so beta is this here 0 0.6 so i'm just going to click that but what i'm going to do here i'm just going to lock this cell because i'm just going to um, use the same numbers for every um, cells in the column so uh, the way i'm going to do that is just i put a dollar sign between b okay and then multiply with i in the previous day yes multiply that with um, uh, s in the previous day which is this one okay and then multiply that with delta t so uh, delta t is this one here and same thing i'm just going to lock this cell so i'm just going to use the dollar sign here and then after i'm done press enter all right so let's work on this one so we're gonna work on this second differential equation here okay same thing i'm going to do is put an equal sign um that number plus so i'm just i have to do some parenthesis here beta again i'm gonna lock that cell because i'm i want to use the same number for all columns times i i times s i minus now i have gamma here so gamma again let's lock that cell multiply by i i so yes yeah here so it's here all right 
and then the whole thing multiply it by delta t again I'm gonna lock this there you go press enter all right and then what about the removed one so i can you can always type the whole thing here but i'm just going to be a bit a bit a bit clever here i know that the total population is constant so the total population is always s plus i plus r that's the total population there's no one else so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to um, make this equal to the total population one minus the infected people minus the susceptible people because remember they have to make up the population as well and then if I minus infected uh, people and then minus the susceptible people then I will get the number for the removed people or the recovered people so I'm just going to do that and press enter so there you go so the next thing what we're going to do is we have set up for day one for day two you don't have to actually type the formula again what you can do is just drag this up to let's say you want to look for um, two weeks so that's what you're gonna get all right now let's say I want to simulate this model for a month mm, let's say for a month it will be around this uh, yeah four weeks Okay, what I'm just going to do is, okay. So now we have those numbers, okay, up to 28 days. And then what we're going to do is to plot this out. I would like to dis visualize these numbers in a table form. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to highlight all this. Okay, and then I'm going to go into uh, insert chart. So um, what I've got here is um, the basically the dynamics of the how the inf um, how the disease uh, infects our population. Okay. It starts with well everyone well almost everyone is healthy and only a portion small portion is infected okay over time you can see the if you look at the uh, red um, curve here that's the infected so the number of infected people goes up okay and then at one point it goes down because the recovered people are growing more and more and more and more so you can see as the time goes on, uh, well, in this case here, you can see if the infected people grows until one point, I think it's about 20 days. And after that, it goes down, you'll get more pe recovered people. Um, recovered here can be, can be, um, can means that it's immune or healthy or dead. Okay. And then there are less and less susceptible people. Okay, now let's try and um, play around with these numbers here. What we've got here is if beta is 0 0.6 and gamma is 0 0.1, um, well, it shows this kind of pattern, you know, infection will be maximum on, at around the 20th day and it will just go down and more and more people will get um, removed or recovered over time. So let's say we decrease this a little bit see what will happen so just change the number and press enter as you can see if we if the infection rate is slower okay it takes longer to infect the population let's see if uh, the infection rate is a bit higher 0 0.8 what will happen aha uh -huh. the infection more people will get infected sooner than before as you would expect okay but it's kind of scary you know in during uh, about 16 days 17 days um, more than way more than half of the population is infected see it's about 0 0.7 it's infected very soon so if let's say the infection rate is fast and the recovery rate is also a bit faster so let's say 0.3 see, see what will happen aha uh -huh. 
as you can see the maximum number of infected people is way lower which is good okay because I think um, when we are looking at this model we want to look at the amount of infected people we don't want the whole population to be infected but um, let's see what happened if the recovery rate is the same as the infection rate so let's uh, pick a small number let's say 0 0.4 and 0 0.4 but what happened ah which means you can see that the disease is pretty much controlled okay um, the uh, number of infected people hasn't gone up um, for a while uh, even after uh, almost 40 days well that's good as you can see this looks familiar the red curve uh, the, the pattern is the same like what we've seen um, when they show the, the number of people infected by the coronavirus for example so that means uh, our model is good enough you know to simulate a disease not necessarily coronavirus it could be rubella could be <laughs> a zombie disease for example but this is what mathematicians want to look at you know uh, we, if we can um, replicate the pattern that means our model is pretty good